House Speaker John Boehner says America might have no choice but to send ground troops to fight ISIS. Insisted today that air power alone could not defeat these extremists. If no one else will step up, you would recommend putting American boots on the ground? We have no choice. These are barbarians. They intend to kill us. And former Defense Secretary Robert Gates says the president will have to use U.S. ground troops to successfully defeat ISIS. In his first interview about the terror group, Gates told correspondent Anna Warner that he has some concerns about the president's strategy. The reality is they're not going to be able to be successful against ISIS strictly from the air or strictly depending on the Iraqi forces or the Peshmerga or the, or, uh, the Sunni tribes acting on their own. So there will be boots on the ground if there's to be any hope of success in the strategy. And I think that by continuing to repeat that, uh, the president, in effect, traps himself. After months of brutal killings, beheadings, and a scorched earth policy by the terrorist group known as ISIS, political leaders on both sides of the aisle are now saying what a lot of people have already been thinking. It may not be possible to stop the violence from the air. The war many are trying to ignore in tonight's Say What? Uh, but somebody's boots have to be there. And if no one else will step up, you would recommend putting American boots on the ground? We have no choice. With those words, Republican House Speaker John Boehner renewed the debate. <laughs> the notion that a clean war fought just from the air may simply not be enough to stop ISIS, especially without the help of Arab countries. Saudi Arabia... Jordan. On a peaceful fall day on the Ped Mall, some of you told us you doubted U.S. troops could avoid the battle from the beginning. Hopefully, with the coalition they've got going, we can get some people trained. But I think realistically, we probably will have boots on the ground. On our Facebook page, some of you agree with House Speaker Boehner, but Merle writes, put Boehner on the ground. And Lance posts, no boots, no boots, no boots. But Todd says in fighting ISIS, war needs to be total war, not halfway war. You should use all the tools in the toolbox. You need doors kicked in, snipers killing their leaders, fear and intimidation all in. Antonia and Rick say other nations need to step up. I know I'm fed up. My son lost his best friend, 19 years old, over in Iraq. I'm done. It would be nice to keep our troops out of there, seeing how we just got a lot of them back. In Iowa City, back on the Ped Mall, Isaac says we can hope for the best, but sometimes you can't run. Push comes to shove, I mean, I think we're going to do what we need to to protect our country. <laughs> We turn now to Iraq and Syria. The Obama administration's plan of attack against the Islamic State group was under examination today in the Senate Armed Services Committee. That's where the NewsHour's Quinn Bowman picks up the story. The hearing with the Pentagon's top two officials quickly turned to a key question, whether U.S. troops will get into ground combat in Iraq. President Obama has repeatedly said the answer is no. But Army General Martin Dempsey, chair of the Joint Chiefs, left open the role of several hundred Americans already in Iraq. They're now advising Iraqi and Kurdish Peshmerga forces. If we reach the point where I believe our advisors should accompany Iraq troops on attacks against specific ISIL targets, I'll recommend that to the president. Dempsey elaborated under questioning from Democrat Jack Reed of Rhode Island and cited a potential operation to recapture Iraq's second largest city. If the Iraqi security forces and the Pesh were at some point ready to retake Mosul, a, a, a mission that I would find to be extraordinarily complex, it could very well be part of that particular mission to provide close combat advising or accompanying uh, for that mission. The general also said the president has told him to come back on a case-by-case -case basis to reevaluate the need for any U.S. ground forces. And Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel underscored the U.S. air campaign against Islamic State, or ISIL, will not be limited to Iraq alone. Because ISIL operates freely across the Iraqi-Syrian border and maintains a safe haven in Syria, our actions will not be restrained by a broader, by a border in name only. 
There were reports today that the U.S. has warned Syrian President Bashar al-Assad not to let his military fire on U.S. planes conducting strikes inside Syria. Both Hegel and Dempsey detailed plans to vet, train, and equip 5,000 fighters a year for the Free Syrian Army to confront Islamic State forces. U.S. intelligence estimates the militants have 30,000 or more fighters. Was the uh, president right? At the hearing, Arizona Republican John McCain asked what happens if Syrian jets and helicopters attack the U.S. and allied trained force. Any attack on those that we have trained who are supporting us, uh, we will help them. But General Dempsey drew McCain's fire when he said Western-backed fighters need to focus on Islamic State militants, not on Assad's army. I think what you're hearing us express is an ISIL first strategy. You don't think that the Free Syrian Army is going to fight against Bashar Assad, who has been decimating them? What I believe, Senator, is that as we train them and develop a military chain of command linked to a political structure, that we can establish objectives that defer that challenge into the future. We do not have to deal with it now. That's a fundamental misunderstanding of the entire concept and motivation of the Free Syrian Army. The U.S. also got a reminder today that it may be fighting not only Islamic State and potentially Syrian forces, but a wider array of extremist groups. Two al-Qaeda groups in the Arabian Peninsula and in North Africa issued an unusual joint appeal to rival Islamist factions in Iraq and Syria. It urged the Islamic State and the al-Nusra Front to unite against the U.S. coalition. Stop the campaigns of mutual slander, the statement said, and direct the honest pens and swords against the head of infidelity, America, and its unjust, aggressive alliance. But at the United Nations, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon lent his conditional support to the effort. I therefore urge the international community and those with the means to act decisively and uh, after sober uh, reflection. It is critical to keep at the forefront uh, the protection of our civilians. The man who will manage the anti-Islamic state coalition, retired General John Allen, was introduced at the White House today. Ambassador John Bolton says we should not wait. The time for U.S. combat troops on the ground in Iraq and Syria is right now. Ambassador Bolton joins us. <laughs> Good evening, sir. You heard uh, Senator Lindsey Graham, and we've had uh, wit witness testimony today. General Dempsey and uh, Secretary Hagel, your thoughts tonight? Well, I think the strategy is incoherent. Let, let's just try and do this as a matter of logic. If you believe that ISIS poses a mortal threat to the United States, then your conclusion must be that our objective should be to destroy it. And if you believe the objective is to destroy it, we should find a way to do it in the quickest possible time with the minimum number of American casualties. The longer we wait, the greater the possibility that ISIS can consolidate its control over the territory it now has, and that the ultimate cost in American or allied lives will be much higher. They don't have a state yet, but they're working on it. Well, the, it seems to me, and, Se and Senator Lindsey Graham just spoke about it, two-thirds of ISIS is thought to be in Syria. The president's plan seems to be addressed to Iraq. Whether you think it's a good plan or a bad plan, will work or will not, there doesn't seem to be much of a plan as relates to two-thirds of ISIS, which is in Syria. Every day they get bigger. And the whole idea is if we, if we support the rebels um, against ISIS, you know, we've got the ironies that we're helping President Assad who gasses his people. So, that, I mean, I don't, I don't pretend to have the answer, but I, we, I mean, ISIS is in Syria. We've got multiple opponents in a complex struggle. I don't think we should do anything to build up agents of Iran like the Assad regime or the Baghdad government. Uh, if we destroy ISIS, inevitably their power will be enhanced because one of their adversaries will be defeated. But to me... And the, if we do nothing and ISIS grows in Syria? Th then the threat to the United States will grow. So the, which is, they're both lousy choices. The, the issue is, how do you deal with a mortal threat to the United States? And I believe it is a huge mistake to place the safety of the hands of the United States in terms of troops on the ground in the hands of the Iraqi army, the Free Syria opposition, the Sunnis right, so, of Western Iraq, or the Kurds. That's why you need Americans now. Look, if this is... If ISIS, in Syria? Yes, of course. The boots on the ground in Syria. There is no border between Syria and Iraq anymore. ISIS has erased it. That's the fact. The Versailles settlement is disappearing in front of us. And if we don't take this into account, we will inevitably lose. The fact is that 
putting American safety in the hands of others who have failed before, like the Iraqi army for God's sakes, uh, is going to endanger us and cost us more in terms of American lives down the road. If people don't think ISIS is a real threat to the United States, then stand up and say so, because if that's true, it's not worth any American lives. All right, what, what do we do about Assad? I think you leave Assad in place. I've long believed Assad is a sideshow. The real problem is the regime in Iran. And my view is that ultimately the only solution is going to be regime change in Tehran. First, we've got to deal with ISIS because it's the threat in the near term. But the long-term threat is a nuclear Iran, the world's central banker of international terrorism. The president has no strategy to deal with Iran. His own director of national intelligence said earlier this year the san sanctions have failed to stop the Iranian, or even slow down the Iranian nuclear weapons program. Ambassador Orange, nice to see you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The president's strategy is doomed, or is he not being straight with the American people? Well, first of all, <clears throat> George, I think that he was absolutely right to wait until we had a new government in Iraq before taking any steps, one that would be more inclusive. Uh, second, he is right that uh, the primary ground action here has to be uh, by the Iraqis, the Kurds, and the Sunnis in uh, north and western Iraq. Uh, what I believe and what I suspect most military people believe is that given the mission the president has assigned, which is degrade and destroy, that to be able to do that, some small number of American uh, advisors, trainers, special forces, and forward spotters, forward air controllers, are going to have to be uh, in harm's way. And I think that number will be very uh, small. I think Martha has it exactly right. What the, what the administration is trying to communicate is that we're not going to send battalions, we're not going to send uh, brigades, but there will have to be, I think, to achieve the mission the president has assigned, uh, some boots on, some American boots on the ground and in harm's way. Would you recommend following that mission if you were still defense secretary? I think the way that the president has framed it, if we were given authority to, if the mission required it, to accompany, to have advisors accompanying some of the uh, Iraqi units uh, with the Peshmerga and so on, I, I think that I would have supported it. You know, in the past, though, you've warned, against Amer warned America against getting involved in another ground war like Iraq or Afghanistan. And clearly that's not something you're calling for right now. But I wonder how you respond to the idea that we're giving ISIS exactly what they want. An internal power struggle in the Muslim world. We are making ourselves the enemy rather than forcing those regional powers to take them on. This is a very tough problem. And I think a little perspective is in order. Syria, in a way, uh, is the embodiment of four different conflicts going on in the Middle East simultaneously. The first is Shia Islam versus Sunni Islam. The second is authoritarians versus reformers. The third is secularists versus Islamists. And then fourth is whether countries like Syria, Iraq, and Libya that are comprised of historically adversarial ethnic groups, religious sects, and so on, can hold together absent repression, or whether they will end up uh, like uh, Yugoslavia. This is a generational conflict, and we need to understand that. We also need to be very modest about how we can shape the outcomes here. And I think one of the things we need to do is step back, look at this kind of cauldron of violence and instability that's going to be with us a long time, and what is our strategy overall for the region? What do we, what do we want as an outcome, and is there a path to achieve that? And I think that broader strategy for the region as a whole uh, really has not been discussed by anybody in this debate. But you don't believe that destroying ISIS is a realistic component of that strategy? I'm sorry? You don't believe destroying ISIS is, is a realistic component of that strategy? I, I think that destroying ISIS is a very ambitious mission. I think our goal actually ought to be uh, first to just set ourselves the the objective of pushing ISIS back out of uh, Iraq, getting them out of there, denying them a place where they can have a permanent uh, foothold, if you will, where they might be able to carry out plotting against the United States. And we also have to be, keep in mind there are other groups out there that are threatening us as well. Al-Nusra, Al-Qaeda is still with us. So there are multiple terrorist groups. I think destroying we, we've been at war with Al-Qaeda for 13 years. We haven't destroyed it yet. We've changed it. We've certainly degraded it 
in the Afghan Pakistani area, but all you have to do is look around the world, and particularly in Africa and, and the Middle East, to see that it's still around. So I think destroying probably is ambitious, at least uh, in the foreseeable future, but it is a realistic objective to try and push them out of Iraq and deny them a permanent foothold someplace. Mr. Secretary, thanks very much for your time.